now he is no longer only a friend philosopher and guide to our industry but he is i was in varanasi and i could see that he has been a friend philosopher and guide to the whole nation and how people are yearning for the change that he is going to bring to this country what we could not do in last 40 years in our industry our honorable prime minister has done in just two months with demonetization you see we are in, the, in our industry wanted to abolish the angadia system we in our industry wanted our laborers to open bank accounts and receive payments directly of the labor from our bank account we could not do this but in two months thousands and thousands of bank accounts are opened in gujarat people are taking pan card so this this is the effect of the bold policy that our honorable prime minister is taking sir prime minister we are in the middle of international diamond conference we had a very hectic and good discussions today we'll continue it tomorrow we have uh, people coming from all african countries from europe from uh, other mining centers dbers rio tinto and they had extensive discussion on dam we are in the middle of struggle struggle which was happening from 2008 onwards but i think that crisis is slowly disappearing and now is the opportunity for us to grow and for this we we need to put a proper structure so that we can develop this industry leaps and bounds i had a meeting with deputy prime minister of russia just two days ago and uh, although we are buying their 5 billion dollar worth of diamonds uh, which come to our country without duty but our polished diamonds are going there and they have a very high tariff on these diamonds i discussed this with him i said sir your country has a very robust jewelry industry why do you levy such high duty on our diamonds which are in fact mined in your own country and he was very receptive he has invited us after a month and if this could be added into the agenda of our bilateral discussion with them then probably he has agreed that he will look into the matter very positively sir if if russia removes the duty then the entire cis countries they will also remove this duty and it will be a very big market for us so we can make a quantum jump of another few billion dollars in our exports of diamonds and jewelry sir you had taken a very positive and bold step in implementing gst now this is a very transparent method and the whole country especially our industry welcomes it and we are ready that at jewelry there should be a revenue positive gst not revenue negative but revenue positive but sir all inputs that go into the exports they should be zero rated like before for instance rough diamonds which has been because there was no custom duty and no vat this industry has developed in gujarat and has giving employment to 1 million workers if anything happens to this like any import duties levied on this china which has currently 80000 workers and has been trying to snatch this industry from us will make it surely an attempt to enhance their business isliye aap se ye guzarish hai कि ये जो जीएसटी में सिर्फ रफ डायमंड जो कि कोई पहन नहीं सकता है उसको कम से कम फ्री रखें 
और जैसे ही वो पॉलिश का शेप लेता है उसके अंदर जीएसटी आना चाहिए रजिस्ट्रेशन सबका होना चाहिए रजिस्ट्रेशन बगैर एक भी कोई भी माल नहीं बिकना चाहिए लेकिन जब रजिस्ट्रेशन होने के बाद जब जीएसटी लगे तो एटलीस्ट रब क्योंकि गुजरात के अंदर छोटे छोटे कारखाने वालों को माल बार बार बिकता है फिर वो लेते हैं बेचते हैं तो वो एक्टिविटी में इतनी बार जीएसटी लग जाएगा कि और वो लोग अनपढ़ हैं वो लोग उसको नहीं कर पाएंगे हाँ कि उनका रजिस्ट्रेशन होना जरूरी है तो ये एक छोटा सा आपसे गुजारिश है कि इसको हमको हमारे लिए सुनेंगे दूसरा इस इंडस्ट्री को आपने जो हमको निर्देश दिया था नवंबर में विज्ञान भवन में कि जिस ढंग से हमारी डायमंड इंडस्ट्री का स्तर ऊंचा हुआ है उसी ढंग से देश में हमारे ज्वेलरी के अंडर स्तर ऊंचा करने की आवश्यकता है उसके लिए हमने बहुत विस्तृत प्लान बनाया है देश में विभिन्न जगहों पे ज्वेलरी पार्क बनाने की आवश्यकता है जिसमें कि ऑलरेडी देवेंद्र फडनवीस जी ने महाराष्ट्र में जगह दे दी है कि आप लीजिए और इसको बनाइए जो कि ये पहला मॉडल एग्जांपल होगा जहां वन स्टॉप शॉप होगी और इसी तरह सारे देश में बनाएंगे स्किल करने के लिए ये आवश्यक है कि हम जब ये चीज बनाएंगे तो हमारे लोगों का स्तर इतना अच्छा होना चाहिए स्किल का कि सारे देश में सारे विश्व में उनकी एक्सेप्टेबिलिटी हो इसलिए हमने इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ जेम्स एंड ज्वेलरी की विभिन्न जगहों पे स्थापना की है बनारस में भी एक इंस्टीट्यूट अप्रैल में खुल रहा है उड़ीपी में खुल रहा है पांच इंस्टीट्यूट ऑलरेडी चल रहे हैं लेकिन अब आवश्यकता इस बात की है कि एक जेम एंड ज्वेलरी यूनिवर्सिटी जो अगेन फर्टनविस जी ने महाराष्ट्र में खुलने की अनुमति दी है जिसका कि कार्य हम आगे बढ़ाएंगे प्रधानमंत्री जी एक बहुत बड़ी आवश्यकता ये है कि हमारे हिंदुस्तान में जॉब वर्क जो है वो उसकी परम अनुमति नहीं है फॉर इंस्टेंस अ पर्सन हु इज इन एंटवर्क और इज इन दुबई ही वॉन्ट्स टू सेंड इज गुड्स फॉर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग टू इंडिया ही कैन नॉट सेंड इट बट ही कैन सेंड दीज गुड्स फॉर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग टू चाइना because they allow these manufacturing in their own country but we you know we ask for identification and other things so these goods don't come for manufacturing to india this will at least increase 100000 additional jobs in this country and i think that this is a case where they only send for labor and it has to be re exported there can be checks and mechanism can be put in place but this should be at least allowed that job work should be done sir this is the biggest example of make in india industry in in this industry we started in 1966 with only 35 million dollars and few thousand workers and today it has become a 1 million workforce only in diamond industry and 3.5 million in jewelry this i intend to take it to 5 5 million workforce and sir my intention is that by 2022 today we are number 5 we want to become number 1 industry in the world to export jewelry <clears throat> sir we have not availed any subsidy Our, our industry in last 50 years have not availed any subsidy from commerce ministry on anything although commerce ministry have helped us tremendously it is because of their policies that gem and jewelry industry today is in the world map and they constantly help us right now they have been helping us create 12 common facility center for the benefit of medium and small enterprises it is right now 10 of them on gujarat and the other two are in other districts but these are the units which help smaller people use the latest machinery the latest state of of the art machinery for their benefit so such work uh, uh, is is being held and which is helping the industry but sir one small request is there 
that in the latest uh, budget, Vajpayee ji ne jo pehle hum logon ko uh, ye search aur seizure se chhoot di thi. Search se humko chhoot nahi chahiye. Search hona chahiye. Lekin hamara stock in trade pura office ke andar rehta hai. Yadi usko ek baar ye log seize kar dete hain, to hum log chhe mahina saal bhar tak usko chhoda nahi paate. Court ke chakkar lagane padte. और उस बीच में हमारे सब ऑर्डर कैंसिल हो जाते हैं हमारे कस्टमर हमसे भाग जाते हैं फिर उसके बाद हमारे पास कोई और ये सब जितना स्टॉक है बैंक फाइनेंस से आता है तो बैंक का इंटरेस्ट का मीटर चढ़ता रहता है इसलिए आवश्यकता ये है कि ये जो है सर्च होना चाहिए और यदि उनको कुछ ऐसी चीज लगे तो हमसे बैंक गारंटी ले लें लेकिन हमारा बिजनेस न रोके माल को सीज न करें क्योंकि माल सीज करते ही हम लोग वल्नरेबल हो जाते हैं और उनके फिर जो भी अनजस्ट डिमांड होती है उसको भी पूरा करना तो इसलिए हमारी ये गुजारिश है कि पूरी ट्रांसपेरेंसी से काम हो सर्च हो लेकिन सीजर नहीं होना चाहिए हम लोग की इंडस्ट्री में हम लोगों ने जब से आप आए हैं तरह तरह के आपके जो देश के लिए आपने जिस ढंग से जैसे गर्ल चाइल्ड के लिए आपने जो कार्य किया है आपने जो टॉयलेट्स का जो स्वच्छ भारत के लिए काम किया है स्वच्छ गंगा के लिए काम किया है तो वो मैं हमारी पूरी इंडस्ट्री ने ये सोचा कि हमारे पचास वर्ष पूरे हो रहे हैं और हमारा एक छोटा सा योगदान यदि हो सके तो इसको करना चाहिए तो सब समा हमारी पूरी इंडस्ट्री के योगदान से उनके कंट्रीब्यूशन से हम लोग एक इक्कीस करोड़ का जो फंड है वो आपके क्लीन गंगा के उसमें देना चाहते हैं आपसे गुजारिश है कि आप इसे स्वीकार करें और हम लोग चाहते थे आप हमारे बीच में स्वयं आए लेकिन ये हमारा बहुत खुश नसीब है कि आप एटलीस्ट इतना अपने टाइम निकाल करके यहाँ आए हैं और हमारे हम लोग की सब की हौसला अफजाई की है इसके लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू एंड वेम राउंड ऑफ अप्लाउस फॉर द चेयरमैन ऑफ काउंसिल श्री प्रवीण शंकर पांड्या एंड नाउ लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन आवर ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर श्री नरेंद्र मोदी Distinguished guests, Distinguished guests from India and abroad, delegates, ladies and gentlemen. अभी प्रवीण जी को मैं सुन रहा था छोटी 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 गुजारिश थी उनकी लेकिन लग रहा है छोटी छोटी डायमंड जितनी ताकत वाली थी और आपने गंगा के लिए दान देने की योजना बनाई इसके लिए मैं आप सबको बधाई देता हूं धन्यवाद करता हूं फ्रेंड्स आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू एड्रेस यू एट दिस चैरिटी डिनर एट द इंटरनेशनल डायमंड कॉन्फ्रेंस दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस इज पार्ट ऑफ द गोल्डन जुबली सेलिब्रेशंस ऑफ द जेम्स एंड ज्वेलरी एक्सपोर्ट प्रमोशन काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया the conference on the theme of mines to market 2017 brings together miners diamond companies experts retailers bankers and analysts from across the globe since the council was created 50 years ago india has made rapid strides in this industry as you all know india is now the world's largest manufacturer of cut and polished diamonds the gems and jewelry sector is one of the leading sector in india in terms of value of exports as well as employment generation in the last four decades 
India has emerged as the leader in diamond manufacturing and export. Exports of gems and jewelry from India account for 15% of India's total merchandise exports. This is one of India's success stories. From just $28 million in 1966-67, exports reached $1 billion in 1982-83 and $2 billion in 87-88. It crossed $10 billion in 2003 and 2004. $20 billion in 2007 and 2008, and is now nearly $40 billion. Friends, till recently, Indian importers had to go abroad to view and purchase rough diamonds. This reduced the efficiency of the supply chain. Many of you wanted us to enable viewing and trading to happen in India. In December 2014, at the World Diamond Conference held in Delhi, I had announced in the presence of the Russian president that we would set up a special notified zone to achieve this. This promise had been kept. Amendments had been made to our laws to enable rough diamonds to enter and exit duty free for the purpose of viewing. The special notified zone at the Bharat Diamond Boards become operational in November 2015. This has already shown good results. Earlier, only 80 to 90 big merchants used to get access to global rough diamonds by traveling to Belgium, Africa, and Israel. Now, about 3,000, and this is not a small number, about 3,000 small and medium merchants have this privilege through the new special notified zone. Many of the most reputed international names in the diamond industry have conducted over 244 days of viewings. My intention is to make India, which is already the cutting and polishing hub, into an international diamond trading hub. Ladies and gentlemen, our goal is to transform India in one generation. Since taking office, this government has placed emphasis on many, many transformative initiatives. Make in India is one of them. Our aim is to make India a preferred destination for manufacturing. In the last 50 years, the gems and jewelry sector has accounted for $475 billion of exports. This is despite the fact 
that India has little diamond or gold production. Another important initiative is Skill India. Skill India aims to ensure that new attempts to the workforce have the necessary skill to contribute to the economy of the 21st century. The gems and jewelry sector employs 4.6 million people. Out of this, 1 million people are in the diamond industry alone. Thus, the gems and jewelry sector is a prime example of the potential of make in India and skill India. Today, we have worked with us ministers from several African countries. India cherishes its excellent relations with Africa. Our shared post-colonial heritage and the similarity of the challenges we face make us natural partners. I take this opportunity to assure my friends from Africa that India will be happy to support them in developing their gems and jewelry sector and in training their technicians. I began by saying that this sector had come a long way from where it was. However, it is still far, far behind where it should be. Our strongest area is diamond cutting and polishing. In terms of the global value, in the gems and jewelry market, our share is lower than it should be. Our future is much bigger than cutting and polishing alone. We have a lot of unexplored potential. Let me ask you a question. What is your strategy for increasing India's share of the handmade jewelry market? I'm told that to a significant extent, Indian exports are importer-led. The specifications and designs are based on preferences given by importers. This means that India is a follower of global fashion rather than a leader of global taste. This does not do justice to our rich experience and abundant design talent. Let me give an example. India has many famous icons, sculptures, and statues dating back over 2,000 years. Many of them are shown wearing jewelry. These works of art have captivated people from around the world. Have we documented this? Have we thought of promoting jewelry based on these works of art? Friends, we live in an era where cloth retailers change people's preferences. Even hairdressers change hairstyle fashions of their clients. We live in an era where diamonds are used in spectacles, watches, and pants. Count our jewelers with their skills, strengths, and heritage 
create and change global tastes and fashions in order to be able to influence and change global fashion our industry first need to have a thorough knowledge of its market the industry collectively needs to study and understand the end user and what they want for example some areas and some groups may prefer gold other silver and yet others platinum the basic point is that we cannot be world leaders without first connecting strongly with the client e-commerce makes it much easier to establish direct contact with the end user this is a golden opportunity for the indian industry the industry could think of encouraging startups by young entrepreneurs who can create a growing market for made to order indian jewelry there was a time in the past where some products from india had achieved a global reputation today india has acquired a global brand for high skills and excellence in software we are yet to do that in jewelry if we do that the potential is huge this is a task which the council should take up in right earnest but the states also have a role to play since taking office we have encouraged state governments to take an active role in extra export promotion i hope the industry is in constant touch with all the states apart from exports india at the fastest growing economy in the world we also increase domestic demand it is important for the industry to plan its growth but that is not enough it is also necessary for you to think of the biggest among you the council should consider taking a census of the lowest paid and least prosperous persons in your industry for example the workers living in a place like jaipur thrissur varanasi rajkot jaipur coimbatore can the industry ensure that every one of them is enrolled in the government's low cost social security schemes like the pradhan mantri suraksha bima yojana for accident insurance the pradhan mantri jeevan jyoti bima yojana for life insurance and the atal pension yojana for an assured minimum pension the accident insurance cost is about a rupee a month one rupee a month and the life insurance cost about one rupee a day a bank deposits of approximately 5000 rupees would earn enough interest to pay this premium permanently friends india will celebrate the 75th anniversary of 
its independence in 2022. What goals is the gems and jewelry industry setting for itself by that date? What can you do for the country by then? Where do you think the industry should be by then? How will you get there? How many new jobs can you create? I call upon you to give this a serious thought and come up with a plan. If changes are needed in regulations, I ask you to come up with specific and practical suggestions. We can certainly consider them if they are in, in the interest of our country. I conclude by thanking you for this opportunity to share my thoughts. I wish the conference all success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for sharing with us your vision for India and our industry and for your promise of continued support to all of us in our joint mission forward. I would now like to invite the Vice Chairman of the Council, Sri Russell Mehta, to deliver the concluding remarks. Respected and our beloved Honorable Prime Minister Modi Sahib, friends of the diamond industry, on behalf of the entire gems and jewelry industry, I express our gratitude to Honorable Prime Minister for having spared his valuable time on the occasion of 50 years of the Council. Honorable Sir, your support during your tenure as Chief Minister of Gujarat to the diamond industry was immense. It has helped us to transform the industry to become the world leader. However, sir, we have a concern that we do not enjoy some of the benefits that other sectors do. Even today, we do not have the ease of doing business by the introduction of turnover tax, which developed country like Belgium has already passed and was blessed by the entire European Union. We'll be, losing our competition. we'll be losing in competition because of all the other diamond centers have either no tax or have adopted turnover tax. Sir, with your blessings, as you just mentioned, we started sale of rough diamonds through special notified zone from various diamond mining companies to India. But the mining companies are bringing their goods only for viewing purposes and tender it, but the actual sale and the invoicing to the winner of these tenders is done from outside of India due to our tax regime. This way, no small and permanent customers are made, and the country has to pay higher prices for rough diamond through tender. By introduction of turnover tax, we believe that all these mining companies will be selling directly to customers in India, including the small and medium enterprises. Sir, we look forward to your continued support in taking the industry to even greater heights and making India the preferred source for gems and jewelry in the world market. Thank you once again, sir. Jain.